This is Grave Confessions from the Grave Talks. Daily, raw, real, and disturbing accounts of the living, interacting with the dead. To share your grave confession, experience with the paranormal, supernatural, or the undead, call toll-free 888-GHOST-13. That's 888-446-7813. Now, today's grave confession. Hey guys, um, I'm a new listener to the podcast. Over the uh, course of the past couple days, I've had to drive almost 14 hours, so... Uh, I stumbled upon this, and I love it. It passes the time. It's super interesting to me. Um, And it got me thinking about some spooky stuff that had happened to me. So uh, I just thought I would share just for the fun of it. Um, So, yeah, here it goes. Uh, The first thing that happened to me happened a few years ago. So I was uh, probably 14 or 15. Uh, I'm 18 now, so... um, you know, it was, a, it was a while ago, but uh, what had happened was I was babysitting my younger cousin and sister, and, you know, my parents and my aunt and uncle had, you know, gone out. It was only going to be a few hours, um, you know, so we were all just sitting around talking. They had just gotten uh, a new alarm system put in, you know, a few months back, so it was pretty high tech. Um, You know, there would be no reason for it to malfunction or anything like that. Um, And, you know, they told me before uh, they left, uh, you know, the only way that this should go off is if somebody is physically inside of the house. You know, they're shaking the door handle or anything like that. It's not going to go off. Only if the door is physically opened, you know, and someone is inside. You know, so if that happens, you know, just be prepared, blah, blah, blah. That's, you know, of course, they did not think that would happen. Um, they're also like, you know, turn all the music down, you know, because also loud noises will trigger this. Um, so I was like, cool, okay, like, didn't think anything of it. Um, well, a few hours later, this alarm starts going off. Uh, it's super loud, you know. Me being 14 or 15 at the time, I start freaking out. You know, my cousin and my sister are way, you know, four, three or four years younger than me. So, you know, I was so scared. I had no idea what to do. I called my parents. Um, I'm like, you guys need to get here. Somebody's in this house. I don't know what to do. You know, I'm crying. The girls are crying. Um, you know, they're like, just sit on the phone with us. We'll be there as soon as we can. Um, luckily, my younger cousin had a phone, so I called the cops from that one. Um, thankfully, you know, they get there pretty quick. Um, but in the meantime, they had a dog, um, and, you know, the wall was pretty thin between outside and the bedroom, and their dog is just going crazy, like, and, I mean, this dog was so chill, like, it was very unlike it, um, and it just starts freaking out, you know, so we, uh, I was like, something's wrong, you know, so finally the cops get there, um, and the dog still would just not, you know, just be chill. Like, it was going nuts. Um, and so the police do a thorough search. And, like, you know, they told me, my parents, my aunt and my uncle, they're like, nobody was in this house. You know, all the doors were locked before, you know, everyone left. Um, nobody's been in here. You know, like, they asked us if we had been listening to music or something you know, we dropped something that was, you know, would have triggered it. And literally, we were just sitting there the whole time. Um, so I thought that was just really creepy. But, um, you know, the next thing that had happened, uh, just happened this past year. Um, me and my younger sister were going to stay with my aunt and uncle for the weekend because my parents were going out of town. Um, my younger cousin goes, you guys don't want to stay there. And we're like, why? She's like, Dad, tell them. Um, so my uncle's a pretty, you know, quiet guy, but, you know, he looks at us and he just has this look on his face and he's like, I don't like really want to talk about this, but, you know, I guess I'll go ahead and tell y'all. And so we're like, okay. Um, he's like, I just don't like staying in that room. And so we're like, why? And, uh, he's like, you know, one night I woke up and there was this shadow. Like, it seemed like the devil, you know, but it has these red eyes. He's like, I don't know if it was a dream. I, you know, still to this day don't know. But 
you know, every time I've tried to sleep in there, I feel like something's watching me. Um, that room is always way colder than the rest of the house. Like, I literally just can't sleep in there, you know. Um, he's like, nothing really has ever happened. You know, I don't know if I was hallucinating that night or what, but I just can't stay in there. Um, yeah, he was like, you know, but you guys are welcome to, you know, stay wherever you want. And my younger cousin goes, Dad, you need to tell them the rest. And so he's like, uh, okay. He's like, well, a few, I guess, maybe a few months or years ago, um, the Discovery Channel had actually come and done a story on um, their block, you know, where they lived. Um, so the house across and to the right of them, actually, uh, no one was living there at the time, but there was a man that lived there. He was an older man that had passed away, but he had lived there and he collected old war antiques. And so the Discovery Channel, um, he contacted them and said that there was a spirit attached to one of the antiques and it was a little girl. Um, and so, you know, I don't know if it actually aired or what or how my aunt and uncle heard about it. But, um, you know, my uncle started saying that he had seen the little girl. And so we're like, wait a minute, like, what are you talking about? And he goes. I already said, you know, I don't like talking about it, but I guess I will right now. Um, so he goes, you know, there's this little girl in this yellow dress that comes, you know, to the house sometimes. Uh, and so he's like, I'm like, well, why do you say that? And he's like, you know, sometimes I, I stay up late watching TV in the living room. You know, I just like to sit on my recliner. He's like, and this will be two, three o'clock in the morning sometimes. He's like, I know, you know, your cousin and your your aunt are asleep and I'll hear footsteps you know like running across our wooden floor in the kitchen you know and I'll say Mia or you know you know my aunt's name and um you know they're asleep he's like I know that it's that little girl he's like I don't think it's a bad spirit I just think you know she kind of runs around the the block um he says that you know sometimes he'll turn and just like this flash of a yellow dress with this long hair will go by him you know so I turn to my aunt and I say well what do you like have you seen anything and she's like yes like you know sometimes I'll be at home by myself doing laundry and she's like this, specifically this one time I was down the hallway and there was a little girl just you know smiling and as soon as I looked her way she ran you know so I mean it doesn't seem to be a spirit uh, that they feel is, you know, bad or demonic or anything like that, but um, I just thought that was really creepy. So ever since I told that story and I stayed with them that weekend, I have not stayed. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was pretty interesting. Thought you guys would like to know that. Um, so yeah, um, keep up the great work on the podcast. I really enjoy listening to it. Um, yeah, have a good day. This has been a grave confession. From the Grave Talks. To share your grave confession experience with the paranormal or the undead, call toll free 888 Ghost 13. That's 888 446 7813.